Super Mario Wonder and Sonic Superstars were quite possibly the two most important video game announcements in the last decade. And I know that that's probably just my bias talking, but who cares? A 2D Mario game was finally gonna try something new. Okay, that's not what I meant. 2D Mario was gonna try something different for the first time since the invention of the printing press. And we were gonna get an official 2D-ish Sonic game that returned to the formula that made the hedgehog into a goat in the first place. I've seen weirder fan art. So instead of playing these titles and experiencing them in their own right, I decided to do something a lot more, uh, stupid. I decided to try and beat both of these games at the same time. By having the game automatically switch between Mario and Sonic every few minutes at complete random. I also didn't look at any reviews, piece of content, or videos on either game so that I can go in completely blind. The goal is simple. I'm gonna play this weird combo until I hopefully beat both games. And the entire way through, I'm gonna formulate my own opinions on how I feel about each of them. And then at the end, I'm gonna give a review score for each game and a duo review score for both of them together. Is this experience gonna be the greatest combination in gaming history? Will both of these games blow my mind in ways that I could only dream of? Or are they just gonna be kinda bad? I don't know either. Let's go find out. Whoa, 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 hold on there, player. Did you really think we were gonna move on without telling you about today's sponsor, Zenless Zone Zero, or ZZZ for short? Zenless Zone Zero is a new ARPG made by the beasts over at Hoyoverse. It's an urban fantasy action RPG that you're gonna be able to play on PC, on consoles, and even mobile. That's all the food groups. Immerse yourself in this game's stylish art and funky soundtrack. I mean, just listen to this. Experience the thrill of dynamic, movie-like combat that brings captivating visuals into insane action. Like the fights in Zenless Zone Zero look sick. You could take a screenshot at any time and put that bad boy in a museum. There's a ton of unique characters, each armed with their own unique set of weapons and skills, allowing you to change your combat style on the fly. And since this game takes place in an urban setting, there's a lot to explore. I mean, this game is so deep, it even has games in the, in the game. I'm actually so so stoked to play this game, but unfortunately, I can't because it's not out yet. But here's the good news. If you use my link in the description below, you could sign up for the closed beta of this game and play it the millisecond this game drops. So be sure to check the link in my description and sign up for the beta so that I can see you on the mean streets or in the arcade because that looked fun too. All right, I guess we're starting with Sonic Superstars. Our journey starts off in Sonic Superstars because the random god said so. I immediately see that Superstars was developed by Arzest. They're the team who made Yoshi's New Island, which is a kind of decent remake, Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story plus Bowser Jr.'s Journey, which is another decent remake, and they also made, oh my god, oh no. But I'm not gonna judge, okay? Because if I went to your house right now and opened your bin, you know what I would see? Garbage. We all make it, okay? Move on. The game starts off with an animated cutscene, and though it's not my favorite of all the Sonic animations, it's still top notch. It oozes care and really gets me excited about what's to come. If Rouge the Bat's here, maybe me, am I right? Hey, no, okay, let's not leave that in. We start the first act on Bridge Island, and it actually looks pretty good. Sonic controls like Sonic. He has a drop dash, which is a very welcome addition. But just as I'm about to sink my teeth into the game, this happens. Okay, I guess we're playing Mario Wonder now. We start Super Mario Wonder and choose Mario because his name is on the cover, duh. And then the game immediately throws you into the mix to get a feel for the controls. And it obviously feels like a Mario game. Also, the art style is completely insane. I don't know what to call it, but it feels like a weird hybrid between claymation and 3D. That weird Wallace and Gromit style if it got thrown through Blender, if that makes sense. We get into this intro cutscene that's just full of personality. Mario and Luigi are discussing something, Toad and Peach are deep in conversation, and Blue Toad, he's just happy to be there. You go, Blue Toad. We're introduced to the main gimmick of the game, which is this, the Wonder Flower, which basically makes a bunch of zany and weird things happen the second that you touch it. Bowser steals it and then becomes the dictionary definition of nightmare fuel. 
Speaking of fuel, my boy is blowing out enough smog to tear a hole in the ozone layer. Bro's gonna melt the polar ice caps himself. So much for the penguin enemies in Ice World, I guess. And he has piranha plants that he can control as well. Yeah, that, that's a wrap. If I saw this, I would probably just move continents. But that's because I'm built different. I care about living, I guess. We see the overworld, and this just makes me happy. I really love overworlds because they tie the stages together and make the player feel like they're part of something grand versus experiencing short bursts of creativity. Stage one, we get the BBE fruit and a feel for what this game has to offer. There's three big bonus coins to find on most levels and also a wonder flower, which basically makes something completely random and zany happen in the form of a challenge. If I could explain this flower, it kind of feels like what a child would see the first time they play a video game, creating something so unexplainably weird that you can't help but smile excited for what's coming next. For example, on this one, the pipes come to life and then slither across the screen, which would probably make me crap myself in real life. But thankfully, they're pipes. I don't pay you to go s No! God damn it! We drop back into Sonic and finally get to experience him in his full glory. We head towards the right, and honestly, this game feels pretty good so far. It's a little bit slower than other Sonic games, but it doesn't always have to be running at Mach 5, okay? What's the rush? We see a giant golden ring, which could only mean one thing. Bonus game time, baby. And in this one, I basically just mash the X button a few times and get a Chaos Emerald for it, I guess? I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I... Did I do anything there? In this game, each of the Chaos Emeralds give you a superpower that you could use when you want to. This one let me summon a bunch of clones that ran across the screen and wiped everything, and I personally found it pretty cool that the Sonic team was trying to explore new mechanics while also keeping the classic feel of the old games, even if this one was just a Kage Bunshi no Jutsu. We continue Bridge Island, and this zone isn't really anything to write home about. It felt like a middle of the pack Sonic level. Like, I understand that in the first stage, you're not supposed to get too complicated with mechanics or little Timmy's gonna break his controller in half. <laughs> but aesthetically speaking, it's not my favorite or least favorite. It's just good. <laughs> I guess. We play another bonus game, which is an instant classic from the original Sonic game. Only this time, it had more mechanics. And maybe it's my nostalgia barking, but I found it to be kind of fun. There's multiple sections you have to go through, and you could see them all in the background, which I thought was a pretty nice... Okay, we're playing Mario again. If we could take a second to appreciate this effort really quick. I love how in this section where the pipes in the foreground come to life, the pipes in the background all start dancing as well. It just really makes you feel like the wonder flower is laced with something. And when you get the wonder seed, everything just returns back to normal like nothing happened, which would personally give me PTSD. BBE Mario is kinda weird, but it somehow works. The next stage, the piranha plants actually walk, which is really cute. We get to the next wonder flower and just look at what happens in stage two. Um, what? Yeah, the piranha plants all break into song, and then they have an entire choreographed routine with dancers in the foreground, dancers in the background, and pipes that move to the music. This is the kind of quality that you're supposed to expect when you finish a game. This is some last level thank you so much for a to playing my game material, and they just throw it at you on stage two. I don't even have a joke here. I'm genuinely just impressed. We continue on to and it's time to play Sonic. We do another metal mini game, and it's as fun as it was in the 90s. Then, at the end of the act, we get chased by a giant fish, which tends to always happen to Sonic for some reason. It's definitely not a Sonic Adventure 1 moment, or even a Sonic Generations moment by any means, but it's fine. It, it gets a passing grade. Act 2 was a lot better than Act 1. I mean, sure, the game was a lot slower than I expected, but this section right here really made me feel like I was stringing things together. Together. It's not meant to be difficult speedrun mechanics, it just has a flow to it, and I think this level does it nicely. We do another metal mini game and collect more medals because why not? And then we get to our first boss fight of the run. 
And spoiler alert, it is very, very, very bad. Like, I'm okay with Sonic being slower overall. He doesn't have to be running 2,000 miles per hour or I'll poop my pants and cry. But this boss was slow in the worst way. By making you wait between your attacks for awkwardly long scene transitions to land your next hit. Making it feel like a loading screen more than anything else. The next zone, Speed Jungle, is definitely a lot more put together. The aesthetic feels like there was some real thought put behind it, and Tarzan grinding has been cool since Kingdom Hearts 1. I still don't know how he doesn't get rug burn on his toesies, but if he does, it's worth it for the style points. I wonder if I'm ever going to hit a point where it's like, I rather rather be playing the other game. I wonder how long it's gonna take for that to happen. Okay. We play Mario for a bit longer and chase some skedaddlers, which are a new type of enemy that genuinely make you feel bad for attacking it. Like, bro is probably just trying to feed his family and rightfully defending himself, but I'm Mario, and my sense of morality is severely skewed by whatever's in those flowers. Uh, I think I may have to jump on your head, my guy. Oh, Oh, that's sick! Alright, since you helped me get the coin, a quick death! We get another wonder flower which makes it rain and it reminds me of my subscribers. Because it's all stars, baby. Castle Bowser talks his crap from a mile away because he's afraid of what's gonna happen when I get my f***ing hands on him. Then Bowser Jr. stands in front of a castle and taunts us? Look, I don't know how old you are, but your dad, he turned into a castle. You should be looking for a doctor, he might not make it. Now, I'm gonna take a second to explain this gameplay loop, because I actually find it really fun. You need a certain amount of wonder seeds in order to progress, and you can get them from any stage, including the bonus stages, which really opens it up to the player to choose the content that they want to experience. It gives you some freedom in playing what you want to, but the levels are so fun you're probably gonna play them all anyway. We get sent back into Sonic, which at this point is starting to feel a lot more linear by comparison, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. If I could explain it, Mario tried to improve upon the old formula by adding entirely new systems and that's a big gamble. Whereas Sonic just decided to use the old formula. I mean, if grandma's recipe is delicious, you're probably not gonna mess with grandma's recipe, right? Like, I think the Metal Mini game is fun because it reminds me of the 90s and I enjoyed it back then. But is it fun? I guess my issue is that you play this minigame a lot in Superstars, like a ton. And I loved it in the original Sonic, but that was 32 years ago. That makes it sound like I played the original Sonic on release. I wasn't alive. Okay, I'm not that old. I do another metal mini game, and at this point, I still don't even know what the medals are for, so I keep doing the mini game. And it just kind of ruins the pacing because this mini game is so much slower than everything else. We get transported back into Mario and receive our first badge. A badge is basically a buff that changes how you play the game. This one, for example, gives you a midair float, which may not seem like a lot, but in a platformer, a midair float is very very useful. Also, what is that hat made out of? Because boy, thick is hair. Sure. We press on in the map and choose a stage called Bull Rush coming through, which I guess we'll find out about later. We get to another boss fight and I try to use my superpowers to do damage. And I think I learned something on accident. The reasons why the bosses are so slow to react, full of scene transitions and sections where they're unhittable, is probably Probably because if they weren't, your powers would just one-shot them. Like, I use my clone power here to hopefully get a few hits in, and it managed to get two solid blows and move us into the next section. Then I just had to land on the boss once, and it was over. I don't know if this explanation is right or true, but it's my headcanon, so I'm gonna pretend it is. The next stage, we get chased by Fang along some vines. We find a golden ring and then get another shot at a Chaos Emerald minigame, which again, is not great. We unlock our next power, which is probably the most important power in the entire game, and it's just a fireball that allows you to fly in any direction you want for a couple of seconds, and it actually just breaks the game. I mean, it's fun, but it's just so overpowered. Like, it's not an enhancement. If you want to get to a higher section in the stage, now you could just fly there. And these recharge every single checkpoint so you could spam them a lot. I'm sure that I'm not gonna abuse this at all. 
We fight Fang in a weird auto-scroller section, and even in the non-auto-scroller sections, he just chills in the background and is a menace. Unfortunately, Sonic isn't carrying his patented Sonic the Hedgehog 44 Magnum, or this boss fight would be a lot faster. After about four minutes of being chased by Fang, he just freaking eats it, and I don't know why that's so funny. Like, that looks like it belongs in a world star hip-hop fail compilation. The second act introduces a mechanic that I just hate. The screen goes dark around the character and reduces your vision. Like, this isn't a slight at Sonic. Mario has done this before. Donkey Kong has done this before. The new Mortal Kombat game does this as well. And it's just not a fun mechanic and never has been. Imagine if the whole video was like this. Do you like that? Is it more fun now that we don't have to edit the corners of the screen? This darkness thing also sucks here a little bit more than everywhere else because it's a game that you're supposed to be going fast but now you can't see. I had some choice words to say about this too. A darkness level. Oh. All right. We get chased by bulls, which is awesome, climb some clouds, and get to the tallest flagpole ever made. The next stage is about hoppos, which are these big fat guys that are trampolines, and so far the enemy design in this game has been 10 out of 10. We get blasted back to the Sonic Dart forward stage, make a bit of progress, and I would like this act so much more if it didn't do the darkness thing. Oh. Okay, we're back in Mario. We hit our first item shop where you could spend these purple coins on badges, a wonder seed, extra lives, or even this weird stand thing, which is only good for online, so whatever. And I personally find this shop really cool because now I know that the coins are important and unlock useful things. Then, before we can get to the next stage, we're sent back to the Dark Forest. We play another Metal Mini game, even though I still don't know what they're for, progress on the stage, and are hit with the classic foreground background switcheroo. I play another Metal Mini game, and even though it's only been 90 minutes, I'm already sick of this. At this point, I don't know what the medals are for, and I don't want to look anything up. All I know is that this mini game is available all the time, and every time you play it, it just completely slows down the pace of the game. I know I said that Sonic doesn't have to be moving at Mach 50 for me to be happy, but he should at least be walking. Between the metal mini game, slow ass boss fights, and emerald chase scenes, it doesn't feel like the game is slowing down. It feels like the battery in your controller is having a quadruple bypass every 30 seconds. We get to our next boss fight, and I tried to use my powers to no effect because you actually have to make him punch himself, which takes a bit of time. Just like all the other bosses, this guy overstays his welcome by making me wait out all of his silly animations, and then we get through his tough exterior and finish Act 2. There's a little cutscene of Fang chasing around this robot dude and getting captured. The same robot dude that Fang bumped into when he ate it one stage ago, and I'm sure that's gonna be important. And then it was time for Sky Temple. This zone was okay. It relied a lot on these little wind things, which are pretty slow. There's also a golden ring that I accidentally missed, so I tried to use my fireball against the wind, and it didn't work. The wind completely completely disabled the power of the Chaos Emerald, and like, why doesn't Eggman do that? I decide to restart the stage to get to the Golden Ring, and just before we get to it, bada bing, Mario time, baby. We do a race against Wiggler, which is very fun because there's different paths to take, enemies trying to slow you down, speed strips, and of course, the Wiggler is on roller skates, which I love, but hold up, how did he put those on? Then we do a badge challenge stage, which is just so fun. It's basically a challenge level, created around the use of a specific badge, and it's very cool to see what they create. This one, for example, is about floating across large gaps, and it's honestly pretty easy. The next stage is a roller Koopa Derby, and the timing here is impeccable. What is this? Uh, bro got kidnapped. Bro, you're joking. No way that flower took me all the way to Sonic. We make our way back to the ring in order to have another shot at the Chaos Emerald, and here's where I really start to have a gripe with this minigame. Since the only thing you can do is press X and kind of point your body, it's kind of up to chance if you lock onto the right thing. Like here, I'm very clearly pointing my body in the direction that the crystal is headed, but the game decides to lock onto a point that's in the complete opposite direction. Bro, you don't get to choose which one you want to grab onto. Oh. 
Okay, thank you. Random God swaps us back to Mario, and I ruined the Koopa's fun because this wonder got me doing things out of character. We grab a handle that's coming out of a tree, which for some reason kinda grosses me out, and it spawns an invisible road with flower coins that I have to find. This one isn't my favorite by any means, because it's kinda similar to the darkness thing that Sonic did, but at least here you could see your enemies, versus them hiding in the mist waiting to kill you. The game swaps back to Sonic and I don't know if you can tell, but I'm really starting to hate this idea because it keeps happening when things get exciting. I tried the Golden Ring Emerald game again and failed because I'm bad, and then I started the level over to give it another shot. I went to beat the first segment of this stage for the third time in a row to attempt getting the emerald again, and after a few awkward lock-ons, I finally get the emerald and my next power. This one is called Vision, and it reveals hidden objects and items in the stage which sounds like a very cool concept, but I think I used it like three times, ever. I find my first invisible platform and sick. Awesome, all right. There's this cool little brick breaker section, which is simple and satisfying. And then there's this floating section where you're supposed to dodge enemies by timing your float midair. I just skip it with my fireball technique. We hit this weird flying section that sends us way too high. And after dying to a little platform, I just skip it with my fireball technique. I do wonder how many times I'm gonna use that clip. We reach the next boss, which is better than the last few we faced. And abusing our powers, we get a few hits in with our clones and then head back to Mario to get a wonder seed. We play a puzzle level, which isn't really a puzzle, but we get a free seed for it. And then we do another challenge stage, which I absolutely love. This one is based on the wall climb jump badge, which makes your first wall jump vertical so you could scale higher walls. And they built an entire obstacle course for it, which just felt really good to get through. We hit a KO stage, which is another level variation that makes you defeat enemies as fast as possible. I could actually imagine an entire subset of speedrunners competing to get the best times on each KO stage because they seem very optimizable. Oh, that could be a good video. Unless that happens. We finish up this boss by bonking him a few times. And then we have Pinball Carnival Zone, which is my second favorite zone in the game. It mixes the aesthetic of Casino Night Zone and Carnival Night Zone, but it also gives it a splash of worse music. We're transported back to Mario, beat the KO stage, get transported back into Sonic. No, God dang it! And then we attempt an Emerald minigame, which tilts me because they're not great. And when you fail, you have to restart the entire stage again to get another attempt. But still, this level is really fun. It has a lot going on, and dare I say it, it feels fast. It's very weird to state this, but the Sonic parts of this game are actually very good. But there's so much other stuff happening that slows you down, wastes your time, or just feels awkward. We face a boss that has an entire gimmick about hitting these sign things, but my clones just take care of it. And then I hit the last one with my fireball technique and went on my way. The next stage is a bonus level where you just bounce around the entire time. And it's definitely scratching the pleasure center of my brain and possibly all the centers in Sonic's brain because it seems like he has a concussion. Now here's where I learned my first massive issue with this Sonic game. You see, I got a pop-up that asked if I wanted to go to the shop. Thinking that the medals were important, something to unlock characters, power-ups, or just enhance my abilities, I excitedly go into the shop. And the only thing that the medals do is unlock cosmetics for your character for the online battle mode that's not great. And just look at these prices. This requires 40 medals? 40 medals for a head? That is an extortionate amount of medals. But there's even an item that costs 200 medals. I was now done with four out of 11 zones in the game. I'll tell you how I figured that out in a second. And I barely had a little over one tenth the medals needed to buy that one item. I mean, sure, I wasn't grinding out the stages and grabbing every medal and ring to expedite the process, but I was getting a decent amount. And for them to ask me to get 200 of them for one item is genuinely insane. Now, quick 
disclaimer, this is the most expensive item I saw. Other items can be 25 medals or 10 medals, but 1,100, if you were wondering, 1,100 medals you need to unlock everything in the shop. And what kills me the most about it is that you can't even use these cosmetics in the campaign mode. It's only for the subpar online battle mode, which is already struggling to fill lobbies. This means that maybe within two weeks, the objects that you could buy by grinding these medals are going to be completely useless. And before anyone crawls into my ass and says that I hate working for things or don't like unlockable items, I want to show you something. This is the Rhino, a reoccurring, incredibly overpowered weapon in every Ratchet and Clank title. But the funny thing about it is that it costs way more money than you can earn in a single playthrough. So you're supposed to grind and grind and grind until you earn the million dollars or whatever you need to purchase this from the shop. And once you get it, you feel within your hands the wrath of a god, a weapon that is capable of clearing entire screens of enemies within seconds. Not once have I ever complained or hated having to work for the Rhino, because I knew that I was working towards a weapon so powerful it would make Oppenheimer look like Tony Tiger. But they want us to put that amount of effort for a hat in a bad minigame? No. We're transported back to Mario and play a stage against these frogs with food poisoning. Then I find a weird secret. What did that do? Do I just ride this all the way to the bottom? Oh, I do. Wow. me. Now, this next thing that happens to me in Sonic is pretty silly. I leave the shop to get back to the overworld and it just puts me outside of the last zone. I haven't even unlocked this area yet, so I rightfully try to leave and this happens. The next act of Pinball Carnival is fun. You ride a little roller coaster and dodge enemies, and I'm pretty sure this place has enough OSHA violations to send Eggman into generational debt. We transport back to Mario, and there's a whole nother timed rhythm section, which is just charming. Then we hit a pinball section and another golden ring. And I think it's safe to say now that I really don't like this minigame. I literally get right next to the booster with rings on it, which would secure me the W, but instead and it locks onto a point on the other side of the wall just to be funny. So instead, I die and have to play the beginning of the stage again. I tried to outsmart the game by cooking Sonic so that I could respawn closer to the ring, but hilariously, that doesn't work. You actually have to restart the entire stage. I beat the beginning of the stage again and then fail, and then I beat it for a third time and finally win. Grab it, yes! Ah! This power-up is called Water, which lets you swim in water and up waterfalls. And I don't remember ever having to use this power either. It also controls exactly like the fireball, so why not just use the fireball? We go back to Mario and play a weird snail level, which also has pipe tops that you could push around. And this pipe top reveals a wonder flower. It's another pipe slither again, but this time a little bit more dangerous, because that purple stuff on the bottom will either give you superpowers or something terminal. We clear the course and then spring back to Sonic to play, you guessed it, a metal game. And this one took me so long that the random timer swapped me back to Mario before I was done. And now it was time for my first Mario Castle. And the vibes are nice. In a very scary, not nice kind of way. There's Hammer Bros, which we all know I love so much. <laughs> Then there's a wonder flower that instills the magical force of gravity. It adds a sense of urgency and it also kills a hammer brother, which is a great thing in my book. We run up a scary staircase, get the elephant power up and head back to Sonic. We hit this multi-rail roller coaster where you have to dodge enemies and transfer between the tracks, which I personally found to be pretty great, but then it was boss time. I'm guessing that the gimmick here was to use these spinny things to shoot yourself at Eggman, but I hit him with my cloney baloney and then smash him with my fireball technique, and finally use his built-in gimmick a single time, just as the devs intended. We finish the stage and head to Lagoon City. Now, this stage is a water park 
Park, which is an aesthetic that I absolutely love. But Bowser Jr. spoils our fun because he's a dork. The boss fight plays like a traditional Mario boss, only B Jr. uses Wonder halfway through and starts to change our sizes up. After a quick tussle, we get our first royal seed, see the castle be freed, and head over to the Petal Isles, which is an area between worlds. Think about it as a bridge, or, or like purgatory. We click back into Sonic, and I actually really like this stage. There's not much else to say about it, but the one thing I will say is that there's this mysterious waterfall that I thought was gonna lead me to a cool secret at the top of it, but I just kept failing on making it up there, so I gave up. We check out the Petal Isles, and here's where I'm gonna say something that's objective. I was a little under halfway of Sonic Superstars at this point, nearing the end of Zone 5 out of 11. But seeing this screenshot of Mario's overworld, I found out that I was barely done with World 1. And I used the word done loosely because I skipped some stages and didn't really collect everything. I don't want to dogpile and bring up the fact that both of these games cost the same price because for what it's worth, Sonic the Hedgehog cost $70 when it was released back in 1994 which is the equivalent of $138 today. The problem with this argument is that Sonic 3 was one of the most beautiful, graphically impressive titles available at that time, and it was so big that it spent $20 million on marketing alone. Whereas Sonic Superstars is very clearly not that. The sour taste really comes from the idea that Superstars doesn't have collectibles besides the emeralds. So the real estate in the game is kind of put to waste because exploration is not only useless, but also discouraged thanks to the game's blast you forward at Mach 10 attitude. We visit the Petal Isles and learn that we need all of the royal seeds to get into Bowser's brain and punch it. So I need five more royal seeds to, to get inside of Bowser. We switch back into Sonic and play the Lagoon boss, hit him with my clone, and finish finish the stage. Then we play a fruit stage as Amy, and even now, I don't know what this was supposed to be. You just hit fruit and then escort a little robot for the second half of the stage? But this part here was actually pretty cool because it felt so much different from everything else in the game. Having to escort a robot while dodging giant fruit was fun, and it was nice to have a change of pace that wasn't an emerald chase or a metal game. Then we click back into Mario and do a badge challenge. This badge was an absolute game changer. The dolphin kit gives you a dash underwater and lets you punch through walls. It basically took everything that sucked about water levels and threw it out the window, making these stages feel more like flying than awkwardly floating around. To make a water level not suck is nearly impossible, but golly gee, Mario has done it again. Now, I gotta do something here that is going to make some people upset. I gotta talk about my feelings. At this point, it had already been over three hours into this challenge. And honestly, it was getting a little tiring, but probably not for the reason that you'd expect. Beating a video game in a single sitting is a pretty big task. When you enjoy a game, after a few hours you fall into this flow state and really start to sink your teeth in. Swapping to an entirely different title randomly with a different set of controls, music, physics, and overall vibe, it basically feels like falling into a really good dream and then being woken up every three seconds. I had moments where I sighed because we got sent back to Mario. And I had moments where I sighed because we got sent back to Sonic. Basically, if I cooked you your favorite dish right now, and only let you take one bite every few minutes, you probably wouldn't enjoy that dish. And this exact theory as to what hindered my enjoyment of both of these games is also the same exact reason why Sonic hinders itself. There's too many little, random, inconsequential moments that take you away from the core experience. A core experience that I actually enjoyed in all of the stages so far. These moments where you're riding a water slide, playing a pinball, or dodging on a roller coaster were genuinely fun. But they were constantly interrupted by slow bonus games, awkward emerald chases, or dare I say it, the worst bosses in any Sonic game ever. So not only was this challenge detracting from 
the good moments in Sonic, but Sonic was doing it too. But I was already too far into the challenge to quit now, so I knew I had to activate gamer mode. The pedal aisles in Mario were really fun, and I also noticed that they call it that because of a flower petal, but you also have to pedal your feet in order to swim, so haha, there's this giant fish that reminds me of the guy who kicked SpongeBob's butt. It's butt kicking time. Lagoon City was a fun stage in Sonic, but the underwater sections, as always, were pretty annoying. They were made a bit better by the water power up, but it's a shame that it's a timed use. Still, that's better than nothing. We face an Eggman boss, which is very similar to another Eggman boss in this game, and with the power of gems, we beat it by not following any of the rules. Also, minor thing, but you can use the fireball ability underwater, which now makes the water ability effectively useless. Sand Sanctuary was next, and it had this cool giant snake that you could run on sometimes, but other than that, it was a sand stage, so whatever. It also had these things that look very similar to the ones in Mario, but somehow controlled a little worse. We get a wonder flower in Mario that makes the water go to the ceiling instead of the ground, then we continue Sand Sanctuary and lose the emerald chase because it sucks. And after a few more snakes, we face this stage boss, which, as you may have guessed, is not great. We get the bubble power up in Mario, and it's honestly just so good. It disintegrates enemies, but it also gives you a platform to jump off, so I can imagine the speedrun strats are gonna be insane. And then we get a wonder flower that just makes giant bubbles rise from the bottom of the screen. And on stream, that's where I said something that I stand by 100%. I feel like if I had a son or a daughter, this is the first game I would ever want to play with them. We see the next world, and it's just beautiful. So the camera angle they give you is from the bottom of the clouds and it gives you the feeling that you're climbing. It's just, dude, I'm about to f cry. I'm not even lying. I'm about to actually shed a tear. It's so beautiful. The next Sonic Zone was pretty fun. It's called Press Factory, and the whole gimmick is that there's this giant smasher thing in the background that sends a shockwave to the foreground, which knocks you up and also moves things around. And honestly, even though it does kind of slow down your gameplay, I really wish that more of the levels in this game experimented like this one did. It's refreshing and actually makes you think about your movement, which is fun. Boss fight, moving on. Mario sends us to an ice level, Sonic sends us to a bonus level, and and then we play Act 2 of Press Factory, and this gimmick is that if you don't press a switch every few seconds, an atomic bomb goes off and you die. It happened to me twice. Even though the gimmick sounds kind of annoying, it's fun because you're terrified the entire time. We get a Wonder Flower which creates a giant snowball, and then it kills the flagpole, which as we all know means that now Mario's soul is trapped in this level for eternity. Oh, never mind, there's another one right there. We do Wall Climb Jump Challenge 2, which is just as fun as the first one, with the added spice of difficulty. Sonic boss. The next area is Golden Capital, and I really don't know what they were trying to do here. It just felt like they took a lot of mechanics that older stages already did, but then made them worse. We do a search party in Mario, which is basically a level where they hide five coins and you have to find out where they are. I've never seen a 2D Mario try to do a puzzle, but it works well. We play more Golden Palace, and it does this fun thing where the whole world flips over. But besides that, this place stinks. The boss is a cute golden pig though, but we one shot him with our clones. The next act is a knuckles level and in it I find a golden ring and my next chaos emerald. This one is called vines. Climbable vines that are entirely useless because of the fireball ability. So get a good look because you're never gonna see it again. We play a level on Mario with these pissed off birds that just try to pierce through you and then the wonder flower changes gravity but not the way that you would think. It changes gravity towards the Z access, which makes you walk on the wall through the stage that you just played. And it's so cool and high effort because the characters need to be viewed from a whole different perspective just for this effect. We get the floating high jump badge, which gives everyone mad hops, and then we get a Sonic cutscene where Fang steals all the emeralds, so for this next stage, you can't use your powers at all. Which is really fun and is starting to make me believe that the emeralds weren't supposed to be here in the first place. Like every stage and boss is complete without them, and half of them are entirely useless. It's just a poorly done mechanic and it feels like the game was made without them in mind, or they were made without 
without the game in mind, if that makes sense. We do a fun auto-scrolling lava section and then face fang in a flying ship. And this part feels so different than the actual game itself that I enjoy it. It's incredibly basic though, like breaking his force field by jumping into it enough times to hit him. But I realized that if you just stand in the corner and jump preemptively, uh, you could cheese this part. We get a cutscene where Robo Bro tries to stop Fang. Fang punts Robro, and then Robro reveals Robro not bro at all, but girl. Girl eat emerald, become dragon, as girls do. Then Fang jumps into a mech and gets owned. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Fang's just been getting his ass beat. We do a KO stage on Mario, and then this super hard challenging stage where the blocks disappear faster and faster and you have to time your jumps. We snap back to Sonic and play this cyber stage, which is my favorite zone by far. They try a lot of different mechanics here, and though some of them aren't great, the good parts are so fun. Also, Pixel Sonic is a little cutie. We finish the hard Mario level and then get a new emerald in Sonic with a new power. And this power is called slow, which slows things down. It's also useless, and trust me, Sonic Superstars does not need help slowing down. I think I could finally guess what's been going on with the emeralds at this point. The emeralds seem like they were made as an important part of this game needed to progress, like Link's hookshot or Samus's bombs. But for some reason, they decided to scrap it all together but left the powers in anyway. Like this slow move? has literally never been needed before. Nothing in this game has moved at a rate that needs to be slowed at all. The water power-up that we got before seemed to only be necessary if there was a waterfall that went behind a platform you couldn't jump through. But I never saw that either. So I could only assume that they scrapped a lot of the content that the powers were made for, but kept the powers in? Or maybe there's something later where you have to use all of them, but it's weird to make you wait until a single level for them to be effective? Uh, I don't know. Let's, let's move on. This level has a bunch of transformations. The jellyfish is kind of fun. The mouse is terrible. And the rocket ship is the fastest you're going to move in this entire game, which is a good thing. We do a badge challenge for spring feet, which is the first badge that seems to be like a hindrance. You basically can't stop jumping, which sounds like the Mushroom Kingdom's version of a neurological disorder. Then we do a stage where Mario turns into a cloud, which is a little janky, but it still works. We hit the cyber boss, which is the second worst boss in the game, and you basically just run to the right and dodge these things until you can get a hit in. But they don't pan the camera for you, so you're always running towards the side of the screen you can't react to. It's terrible. And if you ever get hit towards the left side of the screen, you're instantly killed. So that's cool. We get to the end and sigh a breath of relief. But then the game tricks you and adds another phase, which is two more minutes of this. We do a tail stage, which isn't great, so I'm not gonna talk about it. And then we do a floating Bowser stage, where he's trying to snipe you from the background. And honestly, that looks f***ing terrifying. Finally, we can face our second Bowser Castle, which has the Tripophobia Piranha Plants, so uh, yuck, and also Long Mario. I think this one was by far my least favorite of the Wonder Flower effects. It controls awkwardly and just makes you a walking hazard, but still, it's fun. Then we do an aerial shooting section for Sonic, which is alright. The sound effects are grating, that sound is so sick, but I really like shoot 'em up, so I'll give it a pass. We get to Egg Fortress, which means we're finally at the end of Sonic Superstars, but only in World 2 of Super Mario Wonder. Act 1 isn't great, it has a lot of slow or awkward mechanics, and I feel like at this point the devs were just as tired as I was. We fight Bowser Jr. again, only this time he makes the floors change, and then we get our next Royal Seed. We race a Wiggler and head back to... Egg Fortress. And there are so many sections here that are just so slow. We get through Act 1, a weird hourglass turns over, and now we have to beat the level in reverse as the place undestroys itself, which is so fantastic in theory. In practice, it's a little janky, but it looks good, so I'll forgive it. We find a golden ring, and it's finally time for our last emerald power. After a few attempts, we secure our W, and surely the final Chaos Emerald is gonna unlock something cool. Something insane. Something worth all the buildup, and it's a homing attack. We also unlocked Super Sonic, uh, but I can't use it because it takes rings to use, and we were at the end of the game.
We get to Worlds 3 in Mario Wonder and play another puzzle level that revolves around hidden blocks. Then we play a stage where the Wonder Flower makes these gigantic spike guys jump when you do and destroy everything they touch. And now we're finally at the final boss of Sonic Superstars. And in all my years of playing video games, this has to be in my top 10 worst boss fights of all time. In fact, this boss was so bad that I couldn't even enjoy the moments that I got sent back to Mario Wonder because in the back of my head I knew I still had to go back there. The first phase, he shoots rockets at you. You have to run behind him and then jump into the blue rocket so that it slaps him in the back of the head. But the funny thing is, sometimes the blue rocket just doesn't spawn anywhere near you and you miss it. Meaning you have to wait for his slow ass animation all over again. Then after you hit him, he breaks the floor with a chop, you outrun the falling floor and dodge electric spawn. Arcs, you rinse and repeat this and have to do this entire cycle three times, which takes over three minutes. And that's phase one. Phase two, he chases you from the left side of the screen while breaking the floor. And then he does that slow ass anti-gravity thing that we hated from the stage, which takes as long as you'd expect. He also does this super awesome move here where he breaks the floor repeatedly and you have to stay on the right side of the screen and somehow react to the blocks coming that aren't visible yet. Just quick game design 101 here. If the player is running towards the right side of the screen, the camera should place them on the left side of the screen to give them more time to react. If the player is running towards the left side of the screen, the camera should place them on the right side of the screen to give them more time to react. I illustrated it here in Mario Wonder. You could draw a line yourself. And it's crazy that Sonic doesn't do that, even though everyone who worked on this game probably knew they were supposed to. And at this point, it just reeks of a rush job. Like the background doesn't even loop correctly. After this attack, I try to hit him with my fireball move, but no, he wasn't vulnerable. So I take damage and then insta die because the floor next to him is destroyed. And it starts me all the way back five minutes ago before phase one. You could tell because in this section, the timer counts backwards and my timer started at 436. And almost every single attempt against this boss took me a bare minimum of five minutes. And paired with the game randomly swapping to Mario Wonder, sometimes so fast that I couldn't clear a single attempt, I was stuck in this hell for over an hour. I died and I died and I died, and I died, and I died. Meanwhile, in Mario Wonder, I did a speed stage, I turned into a turtle, I did a bunch of challenges to get a royal seed, discovered a new power-up, and just did other things that were very clearly made by devs that wanted to make sure the player was having a good time. And it was hard to enjoy those moments because in the back of my mind, the only thing I could think about was that miserable boss fight. I'm fine with a game bringing a bit of challenge, but you should be fighting what's in the game, not the game itself. Millennia, one of the most notoriously hard bosses of the last decade, took me three hours to beat, and I love her. Because every time I lost, I knew it was my fault. I didn't lose because of a janky camera or a randomized missile or bad controls. I lost because I sucked. And that's the difference. By the time we beat this boss, I was so tired of Sonic Superstars. Eggman explodes, Sonic escapes, and Trip, aka Robro from before, but girl, gets added into the game. And then you find out that you could beat the game as Trip again to get the real final ending. No thank you. Now, I gotta do an honest review. As a Sonic fan, Sonic Superstars was really fun when it tried to be a Sonic game. The stages felt fine, Sonic himself controlled well, and there were even some mechanics that I thought were great. Unfortunately, the moments where the game tries to be a fun, somewhat fast platformer was realistically only about 50%. The other 50% were a buggy, slow, unnecessary slog through some of the most unfinished mechanics I have ever seen in a Sonic game, and that's saying something. If this game was only the 50% that felt like a Sonic game, I'd easily give it like an 8 out of 10. But that's very clearly not the case. Paired with not having collectibles in 2023, only being 3 hours long, and boss fights that were about as fun as peeling off the top layer of my own skin, this game gets like a 4.5 out of 10. And Mario Wonder was the exact opposite. It was fun the entire time, it was charming, it wasn't meant to be difficult, but had moments where I failed 
and laughed about it. Wonder is the perfect word for this game because that's truly what it makes you feel. I said this in the beginning of the video, and judging by my 32 page script that was probably 4 hours ago, but this game makes you feel like you did when you were a child that first played a video game. When you didn't understand code or development or limitations, where you'd think that if you did a specific secret jump, you could launch yourself into the background and unlock an open world. Every single step of Mario Wonder, I was excited to see what they were gonna do next. And I know I said that I was gonna try to beat them both in one sitting, but I'd rather savor this one. And I don't want to ruin my experience by playing it back to back with one of the worst boss fights I've ever played. I haven't beaten it yet, so it's too early for me to give it a full review, but from what I've seen so far, I give Wonder a 9.5 out of 10. It was a great time. I know this video is probably a movie, I didn't expect it to be this long when I did the challenge, so if you've made it this far, pat yourself on the back. If you think that this video was strange, how about this one where I made Mario and Sonic swap worlds to see who was better? And here's one I just did where I beat a Mario game as Pepino Spaghetti. They're both very fun videos and I think that you'd enjoy them if you enjoyed this one, so go check them out. I'm Scooch, and thanks for watching.